Hey guys, it's Medical Sus Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we will continue our series in rheumatology. It's time to talk about scleroderma subtypes. In the previous video, we had an introduction about scleroderma. It's time for the subtypes. We have five main subtypes diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis, limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis, formerly known as Crest syndrome, localized scleroderma, and systemic sclerosis sign scleroderma. The last one is scleroderma that overlaps with something else. You can have systemic sclerosis plus lupus, systemic sclerosis plus Sjogren, systemic sclerosis plus dermatomyositis. Let me start by answering the question of the last video. What's the differential diagnosis of a mask-like facies? Oh, you have Parkinson's disease and Parkinsonism. Oh, what's the difference? Well, Parkinson's disease, this is the quintessential one. This is the idiopathic that comes to old people for some reason. Parkinsonism is something that looks like the actual disease, but you know its cause. It is secondary. It could be secondary to medications, for example, secondary to neurosurgery. The surgeon was a doofus, he hit the basal ganglia. Systemic sclerosis, yeah, all of this skin thickening and tightness can lead to a mask-like face. Bilateral Bill's palsy, which he can see in Lyme disease. Psychological, people who are depressed can have a mask-like face. Devoid of emotion, it's not necessarily that depressed people feel sad they feel empty, they feel nothing, and they will tell you, doctor, I wish I were sad. At least this would be a feeling. This is so sad. Iatrogenic, such as people who excessively inject Botox into their skin, aka doofuses on Instagram, Severe global ischemic stroke. Why do you say global? Well, because it's, if it's focal, it's usually unilateral. If you want, like, bilateral mask facies, it's gonna be global and the severe one. You know, the watershed areas are toast. This is the kind of stroke that can lead to mask-like facies on both sides of the face. Systemic sclerosis has many, 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 many subtypes. I'll just give you the most famous five. Diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis, aka progressive scleroderma, systemic scleroderma, all of this kind of stuff. Limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis, formerly Crest syndrome. What is the C? Calcinosis. What's the R? Renaud's phenomenon. What's the E? Esophageal dysmotility. What's the S? Sclerodactyly. What's the T? Telangiectasia. Localized scleroderma. Please do not say localized systemic sclerosis. Like, if it's localized, then it cannot be systemic, doofus. If you say localized systemic in one sentence, you are a self-contradicting hypocrite. And then you have systemic sclerosis sign scleroderma. What the flip does the word sign mean? It means without. Oh, you mean systemic sclerosis without scleroderma? Yes. In other words, the viscera are affected, but the skin is intact. And then you have the systemic sclerosis that overlaps with other rheumatological diseases such as lupus, dermatomyositis, etc. Now let's compare between diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis and limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis, aka Crest syndrome. Let's go, baby. Diffuse cutaneous. It has diffuse cutaneous thickening. Uh -huh. How about the limited? Well, there is skin thickening, but it's not to the same extent. First of all, this is diffuse. This is every part of your skin. But the limited is limited and peculiar to the areas distal to the elbows in the upper extremities and distal to the knees in the lower extremities. Diffuse cutaneous, aka progressive systemic sclerosis, has a higher risk of multi-organ involvement, such as the esophagus, the lungs, the kidneys, etc., etc., and so on and so forth. The limited, however, has a relatively lower risk of multi-organ. I did not say zero risk. I said a lower risk. And if it happens, it happens later in the course of the disease, as opposed to earlier in cases of diffuse cutaneous. Tell me about the skin involvement. In diffuse cutaneous, distal and proximal. Okay, everything is toast. But here, it's only distal. Distal to what? Distal to the elbows, distal to the knees. Can you tell me about the antibodies? Yes, in diffuse cutaneous, you have gazillion antibodies. Here are the most peculiar. First one, anti-DNA took by isomerase 1. The second one, anti-RNA polymerase 3. And they have other names. The anti-DNA to isomerase 1 is also known as anti-scleroderma 70. Anti-RNA polymerase 3 is anti-RNA pol 3, polymerase 3. Anti-DNA to isomerase 1 is associated with interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, of course, bilaterally. 
anti-RNA polymerase 3 is associated with scleroderma renal crisis. How about the limited one? The limited one has something called anti-centromere antibody, C for centromere. So, Crest syndrome, the C is two things. It's the calcinosis cutis and anti-centromere antibody, the R, Renard's phenomenon. And as you see, it's red, white, and blue. E is esophageal dysmotility, S is sclerodactyly, which is the skin manifestation, and T is the telangiectasia, which is dilation of distant small blood vessels. Tell me about that scleroderma renal crisis. It is possible in diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis, but it is almost non-existent with limited crest syndrome. I did not say it's impossible. It's almost impossible. It can happen, just very unlikely. Tell me about the lung problems in each. In the diffuse cutaneous, you have interstitial lung disease bilaterally. In limited cutaneous, it's usually a pulmonary hypertension. So these are the five types of systemic sclerosis. We have talked about one and two in the previous slide. Let's talk about three and four. Localized scleroderma. Don't say localized systemic, it's localized scleroderma. Okay, what do you see? Localized, skin involvement. Thank you. All right, what kind of skin involvement? Well, this disease is commoner in children. So if you wanna know the details of this, check out a pediatrics textbook or a pediatric dermatology textbook because this is getting very granular. I'll give you the five subtypes of the skin involvement of the localized. So the localized scleroderma has five subtypes. Circumscribed morphia, generalized morphia, pansclerotic morphia, mixed morphia, and linear scleroderma. Is it only skin? No, it can have other problems in the face usually. So seizure, like it's part of the face or the cranium, facial bone deformities, and dental malformations. Good luck if your woke pediatrician can diagnose this. If he or she can, you got a good pediatrician. That's a keeper. Type four, systemic sclerosis, sign scleroderma. Oh, I have the systemic visceral involvement without the skin disease. And this is about 1% of the scleroderma patients. And the last is systemic sclerosis that overlaps with something else, such as systemic sclerosis with lupus, systemic sclerosis with rheumatoid arthritis, systemic sclerosis with Sjogren's, systemic sclerosis with juvenile idiopathic arthritis, systemic sclerosis with dermatomyositis, etc. Let's review a pictured mnemonic or a picmonic and anti-centromere antibodies. Okay, anti-centromere, anti-cent, mirror, and body. You can see this in autoimmune disorders, auto in a moon, such as Crest syndrome or limited scleroderma. What is the C? Calcinosis. You see that? Cow? Calcium. Ha ha. What is the R? Renaud's phenomenon. What's the E? Esophageal dysmotility. What's the S? Sclerodactyly. Shiny, tight, thick skin. T is telangiectasia, dilated small vessels. Also, don't forget that the C can stand for anti-centromere antibody. Moreover, you can see anti-centromere antibodies in diffuse scleroderma. Now to today's question. What is the differential diagnosis of a claw hand? Let me know the answer in the comment section. You will find the answer in the next rheumatology video. You can download the Apotheosis of All Courses, my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It has 40 videos, 70 questions, 35 cases with answers, my ultimate notebook, and a mind map to remember those antibiotics. You can also download my CNS pharmacology course and learn about anti-Parkinson drug, antidepressants, antipsychotics, anti-epileptics, etc. And you can get a 30% discount towards anything on my website. Use promo code SAVE30 at checkout, available for the next 15 students only. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Nanus, where medicine makes perfect sense.